Hey, it's me back again. I guess you're wondering, what's this on the bench? Good old-fashioned battery charger here. What's this stuff? Phosphoric acid. And I got a couple of crusty old carburetors here. Oh, yeah. And I got some old cheap dollar store spoons. So what's all this stuff have in common? Well, I've got a way to clean carburetors that's pretty fast and cleans the brass parts super shiny in mere seconds. Yeah, seconds. I've experimented with this before a few years ago with a bunch of these older carbs. I had a bunch hanging around because when you work on snowblowers, you're always replacing these carburetors when they get really nasty you can't be repaired i have pretty good success rate with repairing these carburetors but sometimes they just get too crusty and sometimes they need some cleaning that you just can't do quick enough so what do you do when you got a brass float and you want to clean it up and you don't want to scrub it for half an hour or you've got jets like these adjustable jets something like that you might be able to clean them up quick and you, what do you do They're, yeah, so this is, I have to give credit to this process to a fellow on YouTube here, uh, Bare Metal HW. He's the one to turn me on to this. I watching him do restorations on Hot Wheels, and he was doing this, what's called electropolishing. And it's electrolysis, but you use phosphoric acid. You need a piece of stainless steel as your electrode. And then whatever you want to polish, so you battery charger electrifies it and you put your phosphor acid in the bin i've got these neat little betty crocker bins from the dollar store here with the nice resealable covers on them i've used these kind of case come kind of cases for years for my carburetor dip with my simple green for pressure washers that's been amazing for cleaning carburetors a lot of times some of these crusty green coated carburetor parts that will take that green stuff off after it sits an hour or two it comes right off but I want to see if I can take this green crap that gets built up, especially in the seats of generators. They're usually a brass seat, and you get this kind of weird buildup, and it's very hard, difficult to remove. A lot of times, most people would have to replace the carburetor, but I'm hardcore, and I like to clean those seats, and I can get them to seal up no problem. But it takes time that you're wasting to clean that. So I had a generator a few weeks ago, and I did that for my buddy. It, you know, got the carburetor all cleaned up and cleaned that seat, polished it, and got it going. But if I had been able to dip this carburetor in the electro polishing rig, blast that buildup off of that seat in 45 seconds, 35 seconds, it would have been a much better job. So we got a crowd of crusty carburetors here. We got the see so floats and things. And part of this is inspired by my video a while back about repairing the plastic float in the little generator. And I was chatting in the comments with Stella the lawnmower lady and she was talking about her vintage Lambrenta float and she was having not much luck trying to get it sealed up. And I was talking about how I solder them. This one, last year I soldered this float and fixed it up and it's it held up great to get the engine to run on this old Troy built tiller that this really crusty carburetor came off. Believe it or not, this crusty old thing did run. It just wasn't very adjustable due to the fact that these adjustable jets on these are made of steel and the jets pit. So once those jets get pitted up, you can't adjust it properly. It's, it's not going to happen. You can buy the rebuild kit, but something that crusty, you might as well go on Amazon or, or, you know, I get them from a supplier, but they're cheaper on Amazon for something you're not really willing to pay a lot of money for to buy a snowblower carburetor, swap some of the parts around and make it run. So I made that tiller run no problem, but I, now I have a nice crusty carburetor to test this process on. So that's part of the the inspiration for why we're going to try this today i've used this in the past and it works pretty well but we're going to try it with some of the really crusty like that's really crusty and we've got my phosphoric acid now we're word of the wise gloves glasses yada 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 you know be careful safety third kind of thing 
I'm not sure where you can get phosphoric acid in Canada. I had to go to this Bebington Industries here where I live and I have, you know, I have a business number so I could and have a business so I'm able to buy this. But I'm not sure you can, so I think you can find it on Amazon. Phosphoric acid, you get it in Coca-Cola. You never know, maybe this will work with Coke. <laughs> we might try that one of these days, get another one of these bins and, and pour a bunch of Coke in it, phosphoric acid in it, and see if it does the same electro polishing thing. Also going to try vinegar, white vinegar, as the acid to see if that does the job because it's a little easier to deal with. This isn't very harsh acid, so it's not really that nasty to your hands and things. Or I also want to try the 10% acid vinegar for cleaning. That's not very expensive, only a couple bucks for a gallon. But for now, we're going to try the phosphoric acid and see how it does on the really crusty stuff. So let's see how much acid we want to pop in there. Put our safety glasses on. In case we splash it in our face, that's no fun. Let's pour a little bit in there. I'm going to use this, keep reusing this bin anyway, so that should be enough to do some testing for now. And what you want to do is put your electrodes. We have a spoon from the dollar store. Put that in there. And then we've got our positive lead. Let's get a little more slack on that. And let's take something that's crusty. See if we got a little bit of some way to clip this right to the side. It might do the trick right there. There we go. We've got Mr. Spoon over there. Let's try Mr. Krusty Float. This might be a great way if you want to repair one of these floats, like something vintage. We might have to take and do a little scraping to get to conduct some electricity on that. Man, that is crusty. I'm scraping with a screwdriver, still not getting through that job. Scrape a little on the bottom here. So we put our clip on there and we get something to. There we go. Got some clear brass. And we'll clamp that on there. Now, you only want to put this in for about 35 seconds maximum. I didn't have much luck going too much longer with it when last time I did this test a few years ago. But I really want to set this tank up again so I can have a permanent tank set up to do this all the time with the acid hanging around. 12 volts, 10 amp battery charger is fine. And let's see what we get. All right, five seconds. What are we getting here? Oh, she's bubbling. She's bubbling.
Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Check that out. That blasted off that junk pretty decently, I must say. It's uh, very shiny in that one spot. I guess I should have a nice bucket of water here to rinse this off in, but seeing how this is not a meant to be used again for this float, it's okay. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty uh, pretty okay. Let's see what's uh, let's fully submerge that and see what we get. Now that we've got some of this cleaned off a little bit. Well, a lot of that junk came off of that float. And it's scraping off pretty easy too. So maybe a little bit of scotch bright might help that come off, but that's that's not bad. That's not bad. One of my other thoughts was jets, carburetor jets. So let's try this guy and see what happens with that. There's a lot of crusties on that too. Let's see what we get. Well, that's something that it might be viable. I think we have to keep experimenting with this because this might be something that would work to clean a whole carburetor. We're going to dump the whole carburetor momentarily there. But a lot of the rust came off of this and all the junk came off of that. That was pretty crusty. I'm not sure what it does to the inside, but it's, that came pretty clean pretty fast. Let's try a... The aluminum float bowl, see what it does. Might be something if you leave it long enough, it might do a better job. Well, that seems to melt away a little bit of that goop. Nice to be able to rinse it off. Oh yeah, that's uh, just a lot of that shit torn off the bottom. A lot of that stuff came off the float bowl. Jeez, that's not bad. A lot of that green goo came off. So that's not a total waste of time. When I had done regular carburetors, I think the idea is you want it to be clean it with soap and water maybe first to get a lot of that oily residue off. It's supposed to get rid of corrosion is what the whole idea is. So let's just dip this guy in there a little bit and see what we get for that crusty stuff and see what comes off. Just bend that up out of the way. <sighs> <clears throat> I 
Well, a lot of junk coming off of there. I think maybe a good soak in the simple green first to get a lot of the oily residue off and a lot of stuff off. But look, I cleaned it up fairly easily. There's a lot of stuff floating around there coming right off of there. Look at that. Clean that base of that carburetor like it's brand new. So on the cast parts, man, that works pretty well. So that came out pretty clean, pretty fast. So I think if you've got a clean carburetor with uh, all the oily residue cleaned off, I think you can clean some re corrosion residue off the uh, internals of the carburetor with some great success. That looks almost new inside. So we'll keep testing this. I think this is going to be a, an ongoing thing. We're going to test a bit, bit more, but that is exactly what I was looking for. It took the corrosion right off the base of that carburetor. So I'm happy. All right, so this is our vinegar tank. Let's try this other float. See what we get with this one in the vinegar. Well, the vinegar doesn't seem to do much. So phosphoric acid it is. Well, it's seeming to work. It's definitely proof of concept. I think we're going to keep testing, get some cleaner carburetors that are corroded parts, and see how it works again. Well, there you go. I call that a win. Definitely proof of concept. We're going to keep experimenting with this. Watch over future videos for more electro polishing carburetor cleaning. And we'll see if we can improve this process and see how it cleans carburetors and seats and things. Thanks for watching, everyone. Smash that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Rock on.